25 years after the Church of England's vote to accept women's ordination, I've come to Trinity Theological College in Bristol, where the next generation of priests are being trained for ordination. Many of those training for the priesthood today were children in 1992. And it's not just theological barriers that have been overcome in the two decades since. So tell me about rugby. This seems like a tough girls theological college. I'm actually quite sore from yesterday <laughs> yeah. playing. But yeah, it's really, really fun. We all really, really enjoy it. It's really, it's really quite liberating to do it, actually. When did you decide, all of you, that, that you wanted to go into the priesthood? I think for me, it's maybe a thread that's been in my life all along. For me, it was actually different. I kind of, my growing up in the church didn't, I, did, I wasn't very passionate really about God. Yeah, it was just kind of a, a gentle process. There wasn't any sort of lightning bolt from the Lord, you know, this is what you're meant to do. Um, I guess it kind of started with my mum's ordination um, three years ago. Um, I stood in Winchester Cathedral and I just said, oh Lord, you're asking me to do this as well, aren't you? <laughs> I think there's something about stepping out of kind of normal life and coming here that is very different and it's sort of a different rhythm of life and you're in the community. Every morning we go to morning prayer and we have lunch together. The world's going to throw a lot of things at us, I think, <laughs> in the next however many years left we've got for ministry. So it's good to sort of have a good foundation, I think. Yeah. So you, all, you are all clearly really keen and vibed up about it. But, <laughs> but on the other side, what do you think are the biggest challenges that face a female vicar and a female priest? I think for me it's probably twofold. I think one is how people approach you. So I know that in the past I've stood up and given a sermon or I've led a service and the first thing that someone does is comment on what I'm wearing. And I, the whole time going, oh, but I was talking to you about the poor, I was talking to you about this, and I'd have really loved it if that's the thing you took away. But I know that for some reason, as a woman, physical appearance is really important, um, and what I wear can be a help or a hindrance to those around me. And I think the second thing is learning to live with those comments with grace. I think that's a struggle that um, women priests perhaps have to deal with that, that male priests don't just because of our gender. I think there are still people that don't feel that women should be in leadership and actually you know if they've wrestled with it and they've come to that conclusion then then that's fine that's their that, that that's their opinion how do you see the future there are now women bishops in the church of england i definitely feel that i'm kind of standing on the shoulders mm -hmm. of other female priests and now we get to reap the benefits don't we which is <laughs> is amazing i think i'd like to see it that we don't um, have to talk about women priests or yeah. male priests anymore. <laughs> that we're priests. all just priests, and it's and it's cool. <laughs>
Next week, we're down on the farm with a group of girls from the inner city getting a taste of rural life. But for our final hymn, we turn to the great Victorian woman songwriter, Frances Havergal. Take my life and let it be is her prayer that we use all our gifts and talents to God's glory. Songs of Praise is back next Sunday, earlier though, at four o'clock. Coming up for BBC One, the artists battle the elements in Hastings for the big painting challenge at six, then Country Farm visits Somerset at seven.